time to go inside your health. Every year, about 600,000 hysterectomies are performed in the U.S. It's actually the second most common surgery done on women. Most often, it's done to treat non-cancerous fibroid tumors. But are all these surgeries necessary? Well, there is a new survey showing that many women are not told about alternative, less invasive options. They're not even told. So we have our KSTP health expert, Dr. Arkel Giorgio, here to explain all of this. Uh, let's start with a quick explainer, Arkel, on fibroids, in case people aren't familiar. Fibroids are small tumors. Sometimes they can be large tumors, mm -hmm. but they're inside the muscle wall of the uterus. So the uterus is a muscle, and they're embedded in the muscle uh, of the uterus. They are not cancer and they have an extremely low risk of developing into a cancer. So that shouldn't be a concern. You can have one, you can have many, they can be small, they can be large. And depending on how many you have, where they are and what your symptoms are, many of them don't even require any treatment at all. So just because you have them doesn't mean you need to treat them. So when do you know that it becomes a problem and you have to treat it? So you know, because they cause symptoms. Yeah. So what are the most common symptoms? Um, heavy menstrual bleeding, um, especially when you get bleeding to the extent that you have anemia. Okay. Um, it can cause painful periods, prolonged periods. Mm -hmm. It can cause pressure in the abdomen, frequent urination, low back pain, abdominal pain, pain during intercourse. So when those symptoms are there, and you know mm -hmm. that because you're feeling it, that's when it needs to be addressed. Okay, so it needs to be addressed, but it doesn't necessarily, you're saying, oh, need so surgery. True. So, true. so what are the alternative options and why don't women know more about these? Well, you know, what this survey showed is that 53% of women are told that hysterectomy is the most effective, best option, not true, mm. and less than one in five are offered or told about any alternatives uh. at all. So what are the alternatives? Okay. Well, number one is that um, there can be an outpatient procedure where they just go in with a little scope and take out that, that growth itself, done in a day, in mm. comparison to a hysterectomy that is a major surgery with a six-week recovery time. Another option is to take medication that decreases the size of the fibroid itself. Another one is what's called an arterial embolization. Here's what that means. They inject, um, they inject the artery of the fibroid decrease the blood flow so that it shrinks. Mm. And then of course, hysterectomy is an option as well. But in all of the, the literature, yeah. hysterectomy should be the last option after you really exhaust the other ones and see if you're a candidate for them. It's a pretty serious surgery. What did you used to say? Six weeks of recovery time, is it's that right? It's major surgery yeah. and it's six weeks of recovery time and there can be major complications. So Arkel, say someone's listening and they've been recommended, their doctor says you need a hysterectomy. You tell us all the time that we need to advocate for ourselves as medical patients. What do you do? What do you say to your doctor? I would absolutely come back at them and say, well, what are all the alternatives to mm -hmm. having this hysterectomy? And um, I would recommend that people do some of their own, own online research and then say, well, why can't I have this other less invasive procedure? What would the risks of that be? And what would the benefits be of a hysterectomy if that's what you're recommending? What I will say, because the next logical question is why aren't they offering the alternatives, mm -hmm. is that Many of these doctors just don't know how to do these other alternative procedures. They weren't trained in them. They're maybe a little bit more recent and their training was many years ago. Um, but just because they're not comfortable with it doesn't mean that you have to have the surgical procedure that they were trained with many years ago. All right, very good advice and good reminders for us. Thanks. Raquel, thanks so much. We will be right back.